Hi everybody, thank you so much for all your comments and emails about my last video. I'm so pleased that you enjoyed it and you've encouraged me to come here into the kitchen and cook for you today. Um, despite being August, it's horrible and rainy out there, so um, I'm in the mood for something comforting and I thought risotto would be really good. Now the thing with risotto, I, to, to me, one of the most important elements is the stock, the quality of the stock. The risotto rice absorbs that stock um, and that's what gives it the, the flavour that you're looking for. So I think it's always best to use a homemade stock if you can, homemade chicken stock or vegetable stock. Um, which is very easy to, to put together. Having said that, um, today I don't have either of those, so I, I am going to use a, a, one of the stocks that, that you make up with water. Um, and there are some quite good ones out there. The ones that I use um, is a bullion powder, vegetable bullion powder. This one's a, a marigold Swiss vegetable one, which is particularly good. It can be a little bit on the salty side, so just watch your seasoning if you're going to use this one. Uh, I think you can get a low salt version of it though. Uh, the, the other one that I use is just a nor touch of taste liquid stock. This one's chicken, you can get beef as well and vegetable. And I find these really good and all you do, and they're very very concentrated, so you just um, make them up according to instructions with water. Um, with risotto you need to use the right rice and the one I'm using here is Alborio. Um, there are different types of risotto rice that you can get but, but this is the one that, that's generally available here and, um, and it's quite a nice risotto rice so, so that's good. I'm just making this for myself today so I've got 100 grams of rice here which is plenty, it's, it'll give, make you a nice dish um, but I will put the recipe on the blog um, and I'll, I'll make the recipe for two or four people but the thing with something like this you, you can easily halve or double a recipe to get to the numbers that you actually want. I haven't made this one before I'm just going to show you my kind of base risotto and then add in the uh, pea and pancetta which I'm going to use for it. Peas at the moment are they're in season and they're absolutely beautiful they're sweet they're delicious um, I, I'm using some here which I've podded just now and uh, you can eat them as they are, they're so sweet, so full of flavour. Uh, and I've got 150 grams here, that's weighed in the pod. Obviously it's the only way you can go out and, and, and uh, work out how much you need. So that's how I've weighed it. Um, but you know, really with something like risotto, you can play around, you don't have to be exact with your ingredients, you really don't. You can uh, put in however much you want really, or however little you want, whatever takes your fancy. Um, and that's one of the great things I think about risotto is that you can use whatever ingredients you have to hand and, and throw them in. Once you've got the basic recipe under your belt, you can play around with it. And so, on to this. Um, I'm actually going to start with cooking. I've got some pancetta here which I've cubed. I'm just going to cook that um, in the pan um, so that it actually releases its fat. And then I'm going to cook a shallot and rice in with that fat, which will give it a fantastic flavour. Um, so I'm just going to cook that for a few minutes. And while it is cooking, I'm going to chop up a shallot. As I said to you, I'm just making this for myself, so I'm just going to use half the shallot here. Okay, so I've diced the shallot fairly finely. Um, the pancetta is more or less ready. It's smelling delicious. It released all its fat, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and what I'm going to do now is remove this from the pan. So it doesn't overcook and then I'll just put it back in uh, towards the end of the, the risotto cooking time. Try and keep that fat in the pan and in with the shallot. And I'm just going to let that cook for a minute or so, let it soften, it doesn't need long. Okay, and now I'm going to add in my rice. And what I want to do is coat this rice in all that fat. Um, what you can do at this stage, if you find there's not really enough, um, which probably isn't here, you can add in a little bit of butter and this will also give it lovely richness, which is really nice. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of butter. I would normally do that before I put the rice in, to be honest. You can judge these things as you go. Okay, 
and I'm just going to coat the rice in that butter and, and the fat so it gets lovely and slick and glossy. And what you'll find as the rice heats, it will start to go translucent around the edges. And that's your indication that it's ready for the liquid. I'm going to add in a little bit of vermouth, just a splash. A little bit more. That great sizzle you can hear there, we see our coal burning off. So you're just left with the taste of the vermouth underneath. Smells fantastic. And the rice is absorbing all of that lovely flavour. Great. And as that starts to subside, you're ready for your stock. As I said to you earlier, the stock is heated. And it's very important that you add this a little at a time, just about a ladle for. And allow the rice to absorb that stock. It's a bit high, so just cut it down a bit more. You want this on about medium heat. Okay, and once the rice has absorbed that, you can start adding more label of stock in. And you just need to keep stirring that to help the rice to absorb all of the stock. Once the rice has started to absorb the stock and you, you put in uh, three or four ladlefuls, you can start adding in a little bit more, but you do need to keep stirring it all the time. And what you'll find is that it will start to go quite creamy, which is the rice releasing its starch. And that's what makes it that lovely creamy risotto at the end. And you want it to be what we call al dente, which means it has a bite to it and the rice isn't completely soft all the way through. You don't want it to be chalky, but you don't want it rice put in the either. And you also want it to still have a little bit of, sort of sauce to it almost. So that's more or less done, more or less ready. All I need to do now is, is add in the pancetta back to the pan and let that heat through fully. And the peas. Because these are so so sweet and tender and they come straight from the pod, you just need a minute or so just, just to warm them through and, and ever so slightly soften them. They don't take long at all. So I'm just stirring these all the way through the risotto. And I'll, I'll, say I'll just do this for a minute or so while everything heats through. Okay, so that's ready. So what I want to do now is turn it off the heat and I'm going to check it for seasoning. Because of the type of stock that I've used and the pancetta both being quite salty, I'm probably not going to add any salt to this, just pepper. Mm, definitely doesn't need salt. So just a little bit of black pepper. Through there. And what I'm also going to do is add in some parmesan cheese. I can be quite generous with this. So just grate that all the way through. Do take it off the heat before you do this. You don't want to cook the cheese, you just want to stir it through and it will melt with the heat of the risotto. Look at that, it's delicious. You don't have to add this in, but it really does add a lovely flavour to the risotto. There we go. So stir that all the way through. Feeling really hungry now. Then serve it up. There you have it, pea and pancetta risotto.